Hi, I'm Joe Russo. And I'm Anthony Russo. We're the Russo Brothers. And this is Notes on a Scene for Avengers Infinity War. This scene is the scene where Thor meets the Guardians of the Galaxy. How the hell is this dude still alive? This film, we chose a style that could accommodate all of the different tones of the Marvel Universe. Sometimes we make the choice to go handheld in this film when we felt like it added a level of energy that we wanted from the scene. And when absurdist characters are interacting with each other, like Thor and the Guardians, sometimes handheld camera work can allow it to feel more grounded. There was something that was very appealing to us on a comedy level about the contrast between the Avengers and the Guardians. So, you know, when we laid Thor on this table here, we lit him from the bottom so he would glow and have a very sort of godlike appearance. The Guardians are all sort of surrounding him. He's like the big mystery. And this is sort of our jumping off point for them sizing up who is this creature. It's like a pirate had a baby with an angel. We desaturated Civil War and Winter Soldier, and we talk a little bit here about the use of color in the film. You're going to get a different palette. We lit more neutral, it's sort of a cooler light. as a white light coming from the table, but our fill is cool. It was very important to us in all of the sequences that the frames be dimensionalized, so we worked very hard with Charlie Wood, our production designer, to put practical lights in on every set and we wanted different color temperatures for that lighting. Uh, we have orange security lights, red security lights, the beams are picking up blue here. So it becomes a, a very colorful frame, but what we wanted it to do was to just ground the Guardian's appearance in the film. He is not a dude. You're a dude. This, this is a man, a handsome, muscular man. A muscular? Well, who are you kidding? Well, you're one sandwich away from fat. Yeah, right. It's true, Will. You have put on weight. What? We've had a long history in comedy with Arrested Development, Community, Happy Endings, our first film, Welcome to Collinwood. An important part of comedy is framing. It's best to shoot someone like Chris Pratt in at least a waist shot. You want to get all of the hand movements that add to the comedy. The hand movements interacting with his facial expressions is where you get the biggest laughs from him. And then by surrounding him with all the other characters, he's about to feel very isolated in the scene. You know, we do do touch-ups, by the way, on every character. That's not all makeup on Gamora. We do a lot of finishing work on her. Same with Drax. There's a lot of seams in his makeup that we have to fix. Obviously with Mantis, these antenna only extend about here in her makeup. So this is all CG after this. A lot of times also we have to light on set for digital lights that are going to be put in later. The glow that this light is casting is often provided by our cinematographer. So you can see that here and then you can see where it reflects into her face, especially on her nose here. It's in her forehead here. There might be a light just off camera here that is supplying that. Also, from a framing standpoint, when you're dealing with CG antenna, we will have stand-in antenna that the prop department can walk in so that our camera department can accurately frame Mantis where they're not cutting off the antenna because when you're shooting CG characters, sometimes there's a tendency to forget what their height is or if they have additional appendages that need to be accounted for in the framing. This is another homage to a style we developed on Arrested Development, which is a character makes a statement and then you pan to another character for their reaction. And typically when you're coming in to the reaction off of the comedic statement, it accentuates the response. It helps so, keep the tension yeah. alive between the two characters and you sort of feel the space between them. You see here, as Pratt comes to a realization, you're not manufacturing the comedic moment, it's playing out in real time for you. You instinctually understand it as funnier than if it were cut together. Let's talk about Rocket for a second here. It's very important when you're working with CG characters that someone be on set to actually execute the performance. Sean Gunn, who is the brother of James, plays Rocket on set. Typically how we shoot a scene with Rocket is Sean will come in and do one or two takes and define what Rocket's behavior is going to be. The other actors then will remember what that behavior is. We then take Sean out uh, and run two or three more takes without him with just an empty space where Rocket should be. And that allows for uh, the other actors to know what their interacting with, Sean will be <clears throat> off camera, still supplying a voice so that they're responding. Wake. <laughs> the 
the fun thing about this moment is since the Guardians were introduced, they've seemed sort of casual, non-serious, and the second a threat appears where Thor suddenly jumps off the table in a way that could possibly be threatening, they immediately assume a very serious and effective defensive position. Thor's separated off to the left of the frame. I think there's probably a 50 lens that we're on here because we do have him out of focus in the foreground. Compressed lenses tend to add a little bit more realism to a frame. It makes it slightly more impressionistic because things go out of focus, they fall off faster. And I think that if there's one constant in all of our Marvel films, it's emotional realism. I think that's the glue that binds Winter Soldier, a Civil War, and Infinity War is a level of emotional realism. Who the hell are you guys? No matter how absurd uh, characters are behaving, we still try to tie it back to an emotional core or pathos so that they stay connected to the stakes of the story.